Hello, this is the premiere of a series of podcasts, um, not about me or Bragi, but about really interesting people that I value and cherish their insights. Today I have with me uh, Nick from Y4. Uh, ever since the inception of Bragi, um, I have been reading his uh, reports with interest and um, a lot of very uh, good insights that I've been using in, uh, in Bragi. And hopefully I've been giving a few insights to Nick as well over the years. Welcome to uh, the podcast, Nick. Thank you very much. And we should say that I, I think the world <clears throat> looks to you for very much uh, the person that was responsible for much of what we see in the way of earbuds and the like today. It was your vision that really has driven the market. Well, thank you very much. I'm, I'm trying to do a, a bit of contribution to it. So, um, but yeah. So we have some interesting topics we're going to talk about. Uh, semiconductors, the players in the industry, why they make a difference. We'll be talking about um, Billy Audio, how and when it will emerge, why it's important. And last but not least, a bit about hearables and the future of hearables. So off we go. We've seen a very few uh, semiconductor makers in the past that uh, really dominated the industry about 10 years ago. And in the last eight years, six years, we've seen an emergence of a number of, of participants in the market. Um, how do you see this evolving? Who do you see as being uh, leaders in the space and, and, and why are they important in the space? It's been an interesting change. As you say, if we go back six or seven years, we really had one dominant supplier, um, a few others. That started to change at the beginning of the Bluetooth LE audio. Um, as we, or as the industry saw that there was a new standard coming out that was going to be based on Bluetooth LE, a lot of suppliers who had felt they couldn't get into the market thought, right, it's an opportunity to jump in. It's going to be a new process. We've got as good a starting position as the incumbents have. Um, what I don't think they realized at the time is these specifications take a long time. Um, it's been about eight years since we started the whole of the LE audio process. Um, but now that that's sort of reaching final, we have a lot of those companies out there. Now, in the meantime, we've seen the growth of hearables and in particular AirPods. Um, I don't think anybody, including even Apple, had the faintest idea of how successful those would be. Um, AirPods are the fastest growing consumer product ever. Um, they've gone from naught to about 100 million in just a couple of years. And that's really excited the industry. So a lot of the companies that had started to move back into making audio chips have decided that rather than just waiting for Bluetooth LE, they'll jump on the bandwagon. And the last count, I think I came up with 24 different companies that are now making silicon using classic Bluetooth A2DP, all of which are aimed at the earbud market. Um, a lot of them are Chinese. I mean, that's an interesting change. Um, and talking to people in the supply chain, so people making sort of microphones, um, speakers, batteries, the various parts that go in, I've seen numbers that, I mean, last year could have resulted in anything between 500 and 600 million earbuds being manufactured. That's an absolutely staggering number. Now, if you look at the fact we've got sort of 23, 24 chip companies doing that, then it costs you about $10 million to spin a chip. They need those numbers in order to make that business profitable. So, I mean, put those two together. We have a growth. And it's interesting where the future is going to be. And I think one thing that we're starting to see is people potentially are moving from the fact of let's buy a phone every year to saying, well, we'll buy a phone and then keep it until it breaks. Same way you do your freezer or your washing machine. And the items that people will buy and replace may well be earbuds. Um, we're seeing Apple sort of trying to get back into the over the ear with the AirPod Max. Um, we're seeing companies coming in with sports earbuds. We're seeing the hearing aid industry starting to think about what's the low end of hearing loss. And I think there's a really interesting market coming out there where people may buy two or three sets of earbuds every year. And 
that's going to be the item of interest for them rather than the phone. Well, it will seem like the number of headphones or earbuds being sold will vastly exceed the number of phones being sold. Yeah, I mean, we're getting close to that point already. And I, I think if anybody had suggested this five years ago, they'd just have been sort of laughed out of the room. But probably in a couple of years' time, we will see the number of earbuds sold surpassing the number of phones being sold. Um, and that's a fascinating change in that industry. Well, one thing I've seen is that you have a range of vendors with very limited compute power, very limited, limited processing, um, very rigid systems. And then you see some uh, chip vendors coming out with vast compute power, much more than we've been used to. Um, and, and this and also more memory, which enables embedded AI and new functions. Uh, obviously, this is going to change the way that we're building these products too. Well, I think the other side of that that's really interesting is in the past, they sold chips and reference designs, but basically they did everything that you needed to do and said, well, you just put your microphones and your speakers and your plastic around it to customize it. But most of those products were very much the same. The change has been that they're starting to build out platforms. I mean, you obviously know this well from where Braggy has gone, but I'm seeing the majors like Qualcomm, but also um, Jellies, the, the real techs of this world over in China, are putting in place partner programs with lots of companies that can sell audio algorithms. And that, I think, is another interesting change. If you go back just sort of five or six years, the only companies really doing much work on audio algorithms tended to be the hearing aid companies. Um, you had the high-end people like Bose who effectively owned noise cancellation, but that was it. And now we have a whole industry of companies writing audio algorithms. Um, now, a lot of them are just different options of what we have today, um, but there's some interesting ones. I mean, there's a little Belgian company, Jacotti, um, who are now offering effectively hearing aid algorithms that will run on standard chip platforms. So anybody in theory can start to put those together and build hearing aids that target the consumer market. Now, we've got all sorts of issues there as to whether you can sell those as hearing aids. Um, that will change. But even if it's just sort of augmentation for people at the beginning of hearing loss, that's the beginning of a change of what you can do. And as you did with the Dash, um, we're seeing people thinking about, do we put medical sensors in? Um, the ear is the best place for biometrics it's the one part of our body you know is stable it's not like the wrist that you wave around all the time um now people haven't done that yet but i think there's an analog if you look to what apple did with the watch that you start off with a basic functionality and then as things progress you say well what else can i put in and gradually wean the consumer down the road where you can start to pull more data back from them so it's very interesting possibilities there well, staying within the topic, uh, Germany has allowed a fast track medical approval for apps. So you see tinnitus treatment apps that can be prescribed by medical doctors and mm -hmm. being paid by your health insurance. And these will be applications that, that are opening a completely new market. So um, where do you see all these applications going? We, we spoke about hearing enhancement, tinnitus, and now like medical improvement. What do you see the main drivers being within hearables and, and the applications there are? I think it's going to be a, a fairly slow progress. I mean, people buy hearables for one reason, and that's to consume content that somebody else has produced. Um, and that's a fascinating thing about hearables. If you look at wristbands and all of the sort of other things, they produce the data. So it takes time to get anything useful back from that data. With an earbud, you buy it, you put it in your ear, and it does what you bought it for. It supplies you with music. But it's almost like a Trojan horse for all of these other things that you can do. And that's why I think it's so interesting. And because it's that Trojan horse, it can do it slowly. Um, people will buy it because it's the best in terms of sound. But you then may see it's just got little things in like <clears throat> audio enhancements, simple aspects of curing hearing loss or making it easier to pick out a voice in a crowd if you're in a, a noisy place. And that starts to enhance your hearing. Um, 
you'll see them start to be used far more for voice control as well. And when we go on to LE Audio, one of the nice things you can do is you can pick up voice commands at the same time as you're listening to music or doing something else. So we see more features coming in. We'll see people playing with those apps. I, I wish I could predict what's going to happen and what's going to happen first, because that's the way you make products and make lots of money. But we don't know. We don't know which of the things that will appeal to people. Um, there was one company which made a very interesting comment um, sometime back when I was talking to them that was saying they want to tackle just moderate hearing loss, is that they're not going to promote it as that, but saying this is about not hearing loss, it's about hearing gains. It's how do you make it sound like it sounded when you were 20? Well, we worked on a project called uh, Bragi Ears um, mm. like four years ago. Yeah. We wanted to call it super hearing. So it wasn't, it wasn't about a loss or a disablement. It was about something that you you gained and, and could do more than before. Yeah. Which is also the of Bragi. Like we, we talk about Bragi enabled and we want to enable people. And, and luckily, we're not the only ones. We see a lot of companies out there that want to have this enablement, um, not just from disabled uh, aspects, but in terms of ease of use, frictionless use, and so forth. Yeah. Now we're talking about frictionless use. Billy audio is a big thing. But when is it actually going to come? And how do you see it, it coming to the market? When is it going to be something that everyone is using? Um, my answer is... I hope very soon. Um, we've virtually completed the work on the specifications, um, but within the Bluetooth SIG, we don't release specifications until they've been thoroughly tested. And that means getting at least three different companies to do their own independent implementations, test them against each other. And anything that we find coming up, we feed back into the spec to try and fix the bugs before it goes out. So that's normally a fairly slick process. Um, COVID has really th thrown a spanner in the works because you can't travel with your prototypes to test against each other. Um, so over the last year, we've been developing a remote testing setup that lets people send all of their sort of very valuable prototypes to a trusted third party and then remotely control them. But it's horrendously slow actually doing those tests. And when you don't have engineers sitting next to each other, if you have problems, it can take weeks to solve, whereas traditionally it probably got solved over a beer in the evening. Um, and we're not alone. Every standards body, particularly wireless standards body, is hitting the same problem. Um, so we've put that in place. We're getting on quite well. It's going to take us some months more to have finished all of that. Um, as you've probably seen, the specs are starting to come out. We managed to get the new codec, the LC3, out uh, last year. We had a set of four specs come out in December. We've got some more sh which should be coming out next month and then a few more after that. So we're getting close to that end of the process. Um, it's been frustrating. On the other hand, it means that because the specs are largely complete, companies are already developing prototypes for their products. So... I'm hoping it won't have too big an effect on when products actually come to market, um, as people have been able to get ahead on that. Will you be able to buy them for Christmas this year? Um, we might see the first few out, I would hope. Um, as always with specifications, there's actually quite a gap between the point at which we say, wow, it's done, you can go and buy products, and the products actually getting onto the shelves. So I'm hoping next year will be the year we start to see real products getting out there. We've designed it to be a toolkit to do virtually anything that any of our members can think about that they might want to do with audio in the next 10 years. Um, and the, the specs we have today are about 20 years old and we really want to say, can we do everything that you're gonna need for the next 20? Um, and that's a lot of variation. It means that you can broadcast music so you can sort of walk into your train station or your cafe and just pick up announcements of what's playing. You can share music with your friends. Um, you can mix and match so you can be listening to music at the same time as you're sending out voice commands. Um, lots and lots of fascinating stuff. And we don't know which are the ones that people are going to love. Um, it's the old, old problem that 
we think we've got some good ideas, but it's probably going to be something we've never thought of, which is the one that goes out there and everybody wants it. And it's like, who would have thought of Twitter a year before Twitter or TikTok or any of those? So I do think we're going to see more use of audio and voice. I mean, it fascinates me the way that voice has made quite a bit of a comeback in the last five years. Since we've got voice assistants, um, people have just naturally started talking to the internet, talking to the things around them. Um, we've seen a growth of podcasts as sort of listening and telling stories becomes more popular. And I think a lot of that means that the things we put in our ears will have more to do with what we do in our everyday life which may mean that we don't spend quite so much time with our phones. Um, it will become more of a voice-based future. Well, I, I hope that electronics become, becomes more disappearable. It, it, it goes into the background rather than taking a spot in our lives mm. and uh, hoping to be able to contribute to that a bit. It's going so, to be an interesting future. I don't know what's happening, but I mean, as you know, and we've seen... I mean, throughout the crowdfunding, people keep on coming up with ideas for things to put in your ears and they keep on getting funded. So the demand is out there. And also the demand for new. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll be surely following all the uh, releases from the Bluetooth Stick Group. And, uh, and thank you for the hard work in that to, to you and the rest of the members. Uh, I think BD Audio is going to make a, a huge change to how we can create frictionless experiences that that mix uh, realities and, and augment uh, between what you do and what you listen to. So a, a lot of very important work has gone into that. Well. No, I was just gonna say thank you. And thank you also for the vision that you've put into the products as, I mean, this is a two way process between people coming up with brilliant ideas and then from a spec side, we're trying to say, and here's the toolkit that you need to do even more interesting stuff. Um, it's an interesting dialogue and one that makes life and development very interesting. And hopefully will make things easier and better to use. Indeed. At the end of the day, it's all about ease of use, extra abilities and fun for the customer. Nick, it's been a pleasure. Looking forward to talk to you again. And um, if you have any questions uh, from the audience, write them into uh, to the posting. And uh, Nick and myself will try to respond to any questions that might be down there. Absolutely. And th thanks for the opportunity to talk. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye.